Well, guys, hi. I'm back. I thought I'd do kind of a, a little, I don't know, a video kind of following up on the follow-up on the, on, uh, the uh, airline TRF radio. Uh, I thought I'd do a little theory, just kind of give more of a visual of uh, how things are working with the coils and then I want to talk a little bit about the uh, little modification I did with the interstage audio transformer. <coughs> we have two coils that's in that radio and there would be a tube in between them here and remember there will also be shielding as well but with the primaries turn to 90 degrees what that basically does is the flux lines magnetic flux come out in this direction and they tend to run mostly parallel with the secondary and they would also do the same thing if they could reach out and have enough strength to reach to the next coil but with the shielding and the distance and with them transversed to 90 degrees, it makes it real difficult for them to have enough strength to actually get to this next coil. But they, the lines will get close. If I continue drawing the lines, they'd, they'd get out there and the lines would inter, intermingle with each other, but nothing's transmitted that way. In order for a wire to uh, get induced from a magnet, magnetic field, it has to cut across it. In other words, the strongest point in any of these fields would be like right here and down through, just like this. If the wires ran this way, then they're getting a 90 degrees right here, 90 degrees cut across. And as that expands and contracts and it uh, will cut across them, more lines of flux will cut across, more wire, a longer length of wire, and create a greater current. As you notice here, they are cutting, but at some different angles other than 90, and a lot of times they may even be parallel at certain points along inside here on both of these. It's enough cutting though to still induce, but and being that the coil sets inside this coil, then you have a pretty good concentration of flux lines, so you're bound to get some of them that will not be parallel. They won't be really at 90, they'll be more like 30 degrees and 20 degrees, but they will still be cutting across and there will be enough of them that I can that you'll get an induced voltage but it's going to be greatly reduced as opposed to if the coil is this way which I did draw here if we had turned the coil around then we got all this flux lines that's cutting across pretty much nearly 90 degrees in most cases will be 90 degrees it's expanding and contracting expanding and contracting and you're getting the maximum amount of signal um, magnetic fields inducing the maximum amount of signal into the secondary whereas this it's pretty limited and with the primaries inside the secondaries will act as their own little shields for these primaries which will actually keep most of this magnetic field pretty the strongest part of it pretty much concentrated inside as it gets out it'll weaken quite quickly and then it's going to run into the actually it's going to run into the shield cans that fit around here and that will pretty much stop it uh, entirely from getting to the next set of coils but I, I just you know I wanted to show you how this thing actually looks if you would, could see the magnetic flux lines, you'd see how they 
are operating and stuff. Now, we'll move on from this and get into the little deal I did with the resistor and capacitor and show how that's working. If you have any questions on this, we can go in deeper into it, but I wanted to keep it kind of light and stuff on it. Uh, I'm going to use some sort of different color for this. My black is uh, pretty much dyed. So anyway, we, uh, you remember that the interstage transformer was burnt out on the primary which goes to the plate so and I'm going to draw it a little differently but we have the plate here and that's all we're going to be concerned about of this tube and the way it was wired you had the primary coil and that came out and went to a resistor and then went to B plus iron core that's what these lines mean in a schematic and we have our secondary and it's tapped to ground and these guys go off to the grids of our push pull output 45s and we won't concern any more about the tubes now what we did and what I did was since this was dead burned out died whatever reasons then I took and disconnected it here and disconnected it here put in another resistor and series with this one bringing it up around about 20 well I think actually what I had was about 29,000 anywhere from 27 to 30,000 is fine for this particular tube that's in there it's a 27 tube for a plate load and then we just took that off went through a capacitor and came down here and attached to one side of the secondary and the value of this cap can be anywhere I believe I put a 0.05 in there I can't remember what I put in um, you can put you know it depends on what sound you're looking for but you can go from uh, a range of say 0.1 to uh, point zero one somewhere in there would be perfectly fine anywhere in there I think I put a point well point oh four seven but point oh five in there basically as a coupling cap now how is this thing working I mean we we took out the primary so we're not inducing anything into the secondary anymore there's no magnetic induction mutual induction here at all well what ends up happening is this is acting more like an auto transformer on this side on the secondary now now if we take a look at the signal we use green and blue on this remember we got a center tap that goes to ground so let's get this up here where you can see it better I didn't realize I was off the camera sorry about that guys but remember the the secondary has a center tap to ground. So I have a signal and we'll show it like this. Well that's going to come through and it, of course the DC will get blocked at the capacitor just like any other you know circuit that you would find that didn't have an interstage transformer. And it's going to be going in the same direction here just like it is coming out of the tube 
but that's only right here. Being that this center tap goes to ground, that's it. That's all it's being portrayed to that grid. You remember, the tube operates by uh, everything is relative to the cathodes. And of course, in this case, um, this has got filaments, so I'll just draw those in as cathodes. But and they're connected together and they run back to the power supply but everything including the plates everything is all relative to the cathodes so because the cathode is what's producing the current one side of this cathode lead actually since these are self biased one side is actually connected to a resistor that goes to ground. Okay, and that's our bias resistor. It's just like you've seen in more newer radios in the audio section usually you'll find uh, sometimes cathode biasing. You'll have a tube um, you know the cathode and that cathode goes to resistor may have a bypass capacitor that goes to ground and of course you got you know a lot of times you'll find that be in modern day be pentodes but you can do a triode like this but you'd find this like in an audio output tube on a you know uh, some radios some RF amps and some uh, IF amps will also be cathode biased, but you got a cathode resistor in here. And what this does is it it supplies a positive voltage here. Usually this will be like you know two three hundred ohms. You get a four or five volts, six volts, depending on amount how much current's going through there. Positive voltage at the cathode, but that means that actually you've got a negative voltage on the grid respect to the cathode of minus six volts if the cathode is positive six. But everything is actually connected these grounds connect so everything is actually connected back and goes through and relative to the cathode. So this signal here is only on this part of the winding as far as this tube is concerned. But since this winding is all on the same core and everything it acts as an auto transformer and this signal right here this will be right here induced across right here my drawings are terrible but it will be right across here what that does is it is a magnetic field that builds up and goes down up and down back and forth as that signal varies and induces a signal here but that signal will be reversed and will look like this just the opposite coming down here. So on this side we have just the opposite signal. And it's all because we've got that center tap to ground. And then this thing acts, the secondary is acting just as an auto transformer. Our signal coming from the tube comes in here, comes through the capacitor, induces or puts a voltage, a signal voltage onto this from the ground to here onto this part of the coil on the secondary and that builds a magnetic field, a changing magnetic field that induces into this coil and when it when you induce it into a coil your, your voltage will be reversed, your current flow is reversed to what is going on up that from the uh, coil that's doing the induction into it. So in other words, basically this is acting as a primary at this point and this is acting as a secondary. 
and with the center tap being ground that gives us those two coils we act as an auto transformer so when this is going positive this induces in here this makes this go negative now we've got our push pull that will be amplified out and go to our audio transformer which again is center tapped but in that case it don't go to ground it goes to B plus so I, I just wanted to explain why this actually works and how it's working and how we can get by with removing this now there's a lot of different little tricks and how the value comes up for this you know what size resistors used in here for this tube basically goes back and if you watch uh, some of my tube theory videos you'll see where I talk about biasing and talk about load lines and stuff well that's basically what it is you you can look up in the tube characteristics on the particular tube and look up its uh, look up its um, graph that has its what they call the plate characteristics, plate current characteristics. But in any case, the main thing you're looking for, what you can do is you can kind of pretty much get a good determination of what this load should be, these resistors or this load resistor, by just looking at the maximum current, saturation current that the tube can do. This is a ballpark figure, rule of thumb way of doing it. And look at the maximum plate voltage that could be possibly be here, which will be your B plus voltage. If the tube is in cutoff, your B plus voltage will be here. If the tube is, if the grid goes positive, the tube is in full saturation. You got the maximum amount of current. You have zero volts, but maximum current. You take voltage, divide by current, gives you resistance. And that's the resistance that these need that this needs to be total, and that's how that's determined. That's a ballpark. It's not dead perfect, but it will work, and uh, and obviously it does. The radio works and plays. Now I know some guys have actually done this little trick, even with a perfectly good operating transformer, just to keep the transformer safe. Uh, basically, uh, they disconnect the primary and parallel in, or parallel in, sometimes they'll parallel in, although that's not going to keep it totally safe. But mo most of them will actually disconnect that primary and run this. That way, the, even a perfectly good transformer with a good primary, it'll stay that way. Um, and it's a thought you can do that. Uh, you can also do a few other things, but my guess is that this transformer probably went out because someone else messed with the radio. Because like I said, uh, there's more to the circuit right here on this B plus and they switched the wires around where the coil was connected and everything and put actually too much load through it. And I think that's what burned it out. So, but anyway, I wanted to go over how this works why it works and show that to you so and it'll work on any any radio of this error of this time period that had interstage transformers you know later radios they got rid of the interstage transformers and adopted other means of doing this mainly because well it's heavy iron you know it's a lot of iron a lot of copper there and it's costly and even if you had to put a tube in there like a phase changer for a tube or put other components such as a resistive type phase change uh, that's fine because they're a lot cheaper than transformers are but back in the day transformers weren't that expensive so they went this route so anyway uh, I think I've kept your time long enough and Just uh, wanted to show the two situations a little more clear. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I'm right now trying to get some time to uh, uh, do a little work with the cabinet. I did get the radio in. It's not hooked up yet. And uh, But later I'll 
try to get a video of that as a final video the radio in the cabinet and show how it sounds playing in the cabinet uh, otherwise uh, I think the next project will be the uh, well I've already actually kind of looked at it and kind of started in on it uh, will be the wire recorder if not now so I'm curious what may be recorded already on the wires that's in there uh, so anyway I'll get back to you uh, on that and uh, I got to answer this so I'll see you in the next video thanks